before we kick off this video, I just wanted to put it out there that if any of you guys or girls out there are artistically inclined and you feel like you'd be good at making YouTube thumbnails for this series or for any of my videos in general, um, feel free to contact me via the comments or Twitter or whatnot, and um, maybe we could set something up. You know, I mean, I have the, these uh, thumbnails. I'm just making Microsoft Paint as I do for almost all my video thumbnails, and I'm not looking for anything too fancy or clickbaity or whatnot. But if you feel like you'd be good at making YouTube thumbnails and you'd want to do it, um, certainly I'd be open to that idea. And I wouldn't really offer you much in return other than like a shout out and a link to your channel or Twitter or whatnot. But just an interesting idea I thought I'd put out there to maybe uh, enhance this series or any of my videos in general. So uh, feel free to let me know if you are artistically inclined and you would be willing to do something like that. Hello everyone, this is Andrew and we're back for the third part of the Super Smash Bros. Melee tier list for NTSC 1.02. Now um, a lot of good positive feedback from the previous video, so thank you guys for that. And a um, few things I will say, um, just reading some, a lot of your comments, and there's a lot, lot of comments for the previous video, so I appreciate that. And um, so what this tier list is based on, a lot of people have pointed out, for example, that Doc hasn't had great results compared to Samus, so Samus should be higher. Um, this is really something I forgot to address where what the tier list is really based on. I, want, I base this tier list off of top human level play, so how good could humans really get at Melee? That's what I'm trying to um, answer with this tier list and put the characters based on that. This isn't necessarily based on like tool assisted level play. That's something that um, you know the tier list might look different, but that's not a very relevant tier list for most purposes because um, no human is ever going to be able to do 30 Smash GI inputs in one second, or they're never going to be a be able to react in half a frame or things like that. And if you're playing in a TAS. Um, you're pretty much just playing perfect. And if you don't know what a TAS is, it's tool assisted, it stands for Tool Assisted Speedrun. It's not really a speedrun in this um, in this sort of setting with Melee, other than if you're doing like Adventure Mode or whatnot. But it essentially means that um, in a TAS, people will play the game frame by frame, and um, you save states, re-records, and be, be it, basically be able to play perfectly. And I don't think that humans are ever going to be able to play perfectly. Really, the whole point of Melee is punishing your opponent's mistakes because if you both played perfectly for eight minutes you would probably never hit each other and nothing would really happen and the game would be pretty boring. Um, but as it stands right now the current melee, melee metagame is on a larger sense based on punishing your opponent's mistakes. For example, maybe they recover in a certain way and you could hit them or maybe they approach poorly and you could punish them for that or maybe you could just win in neutral. I mean you could really look at almost any time you get hit in melee as a mistake. It might be a small mistake, it might be a large mistake, but that's um, really what it comes down to. So with that said, I would say that this list is based on top human level play and um, a little bit of theory play as well. Like I think that I'm thinking as if all these characters were pushed to levels that would be slightly above Armada, who is the best player in the world. So uh, we're not there yet, obviously. If there's no one better than Armada, but Armada is continuing to improve. A lot of people are continuing to improve, and I think they're working towards top level play, which is what this list is based on, and they'll, they'll probably never fully get there, no one's going to be um, as good as they can be as humans, and no one will ever be tool assisted good, obviously, but um, that's what this list is really based on, just top level play, maybe slightly above Armada level, which of course um, is a vacant spot right now, no one's better than Armada, and I do consider results for this list as well, um, tournament results, for example Yoshi, I, five years ago, I wouldn't have put Yoshi as high on this list because me and the rest of the Melee community didn't realize how good he was, maybe with a few exceptions. Um, that doesn't mean that Yoshi didn't deserve to be this high in the list 20, in 2011, but we simply didn't know that he was this good. But in the last few years, we've seen Amsa, the red Yoshi from Japan, do very well with Yoshi, at least comparatively. He made top eight at, top eight at um, Apex 2015, which was a uh, pretty big deal for a character like Yoshi. So even though Yoshi deserved to be this high on the list all along, we saw his results, and in my tier list and in many people's tier list, he moves up. You know, even though he deserves to be there in the first place, now we know that Yoshi can be that good. Um, but for example, a lot of people complain about this list that Doc is higher than Samus. And with what I just said about Yoshi, you might think, well, why isn't Samus higher than Doc? Because we have all these great Samus players, such as Plup, Hugs, Duck, they're all getting great results. Um, Duck recently beat Leffen, which was a uh, a big win at DreamHack, and um, you know they're great. They're 
making some top eights, not a whole lot. Um, some t plenty of top sixteens. Um, certainly at regionals they do very well. And but Doc is pretty much dead as a character. There are very very few good Doc players, and they're not getting top eights or top thirty twos at um, big super nationals. Um, whereas Samus's are. There really there's really only just a couple good Doc players, or maybe a few that are mildly active. OTG. Um, in the tri-state area, Boss pretty much plays Smash 4 now. For the most part, I did see him actually playing Melee on stream on VG Bootcamp early, early today. But um, from MDVA, Boss is a pretty good Doc. Shroom doesn't really play Doc anymore. You'll very, very rarely see him play Doc. So Doc is almost dead as a character, yet I put him higher than Samus because I do feel that if there were great Doc players and players who were pushing Doc, that Doc would be slightly better than Samus at top-level play. Even though Samus is pretty much kicking Doc's ass in terms of results, um, that doesn't mean that results should be everything. Like, um, in some, in many nationals, Pikachu is doing better than Falcon because Axe is getting higher placings than a lot of these Falcon mains with Pikachu, but I still think Falcon is better than Pikachu, but um, results aren't everything because there are certain characters pushing other characters harder and just better skilled players with different characters that you can't base everything off of results and you couldn't even really rank um, the bottom half of the tier list just based on results because there there really isn't any for a lot of these characters so essentially yes this list is based on what I think in theory top level play for all these characters would look like and how good they would be at top level play not 100 percent based on results although they are taken into consideration another thing about it, the feedback that I want to um, address is a lot of people will just leave comments saying, oh, I think Pichu or I think um, Roy should be higher. Well, that's fine. If you want to leave a comment like that, it's perfectly fine, and I'll take that into consideration. But um, if you want to make me like really consider it more, um, leave a reasoning why you feel something. So if you say Roy should be higher, say like, okay, well, his down tilt um, is really good versus these characters, and I think his neutral is dash dance. Like things like that, you don't really have to go super in detail, or if you want to, you certainly can. Um, shout out to a guy on the Falco video who wrote actually qu almost an essay about why Mewtwo should be higher. And now I am considering, you know, the the bottom of the tier list more because um, a lot of the feedback has been on the bottom of the tier list, the bottom seven characters from Zelda to Mewtwo. And um, to be honest, those are the hardest characters to rank, I'd say by far, because we never see those characters. Um, nobody really knows what their full potential is. Um, other than maybe the best mains of them, but even they, you know, haven't really had a, a good chance to do super, super well in tournaments. You know, you don't see at Evo um, many Game & Watches in Top 8 or Nesses or Bowsers. Um, there's really only a very few number of people who play those characters at um, a moderately high level, and um, no one plays them all at a high level. For example, Simna, for example, he's a very, very good Ness player, and um, but Ness is really the only character that he's super, super good with. Um, you know, like he'll he'll have a Roy, but his Roy is not nearly as good as his Ness. So that it's a tough part about making this tier list is that um, as one person you can't play everybody. But I did talk about in the previous video who I, that I do play a little bit of everybody, so I know um, a decent amount about all these characters. But yeah, so leave a reasoning why you think a character should be better or you think the list should be different. Um, you don't have to, you know, if you just want to put your input in and say, um, look, I think this character should be higher, that's perfectly fine as well. But um, if you really want me to, like, take it into heavy consideration, leave some reasoning, and I'll uh, happily read them and respond if I think, uh, if I have something to say. And um, this tier list is, uh, is not a um, finalized thing. It could certainly change. Maybe by the end of this tier list it'll look a little different. Um, maybe it won't, so we'll see. But like I said, it's very hard to rank those bottom seven characters. Um, so yeah, let me know if you, have, if you have any thoughts on them. And uh, any character in general, you know, I don't see a big change happening. Like, I don't see by the end of the series that Sheik is going to be better than Falco or um, Martha is going to be better than Fox or something. But um, even if, it re if you have something, a, th a thought like that on any part of this tier list, please um, let me know and it, I will take it into consideration. As long, of course, as of course you're being um, relatively civil. You know, as long as it's not like fuck you, asshole, Mario sucks, he deserves to be bottom on the list. You know, other than that, I will take your um, comments into consideration. So back to the topic at hand, of course, for this video, as you all are here for. Why is Sheik the third best character in Super Smash Bros. Melee? And why is Marth 
not the third best character in Super Smash Bros. Melee. I think he's the fourth. So I want to keep this video mostly about Sheik, or I mean, who knows? I don't really set rules for myself or anything, or plan my videos out too heavily. But there is going to be the question, and it's a fair question, why... First I said that Falco was better than Marth, and that probably raised some ears. I didn't actually get... I expected a lot of people to say, you're an idiot, Marth is the best character in the game, or second best. But I actually didn't get many responses like that, which was surprising. And I did get a surprising, for what it's worth, a decent amount of people who agreed with me that Falco is number two. And this is traditional thinking. It's, it's My opinion just happens to be in line with with traditional thinking, which would often put my the top four of the tier list the same way I have it, just by kind of coincidence, really, or just the reasons people... I mean, my reasons for those characters being top four might be different than what people maybe thought in, like, 2008. Um, certainly, especially, the metagame has changed a lot, and I still think it is this way. But the reason I think a lot of people overrate Marth is because the Melee community in general has a great affection for Marth as a character. Most people, in some form, play a little bit of Marth. Most people find Marth very fun to play. They find him very fun to watch, and because of that, I think they tend to overrate him slightly. Just slightly. Um, and Sheik, for example, they really don't... A lot of people don't really like watching Sheik. They're not, they don't find Sheik as interesting. And there's some reasons for that. I mean, Marth is kind of a more freestyle character. It's a very simple character. I mean, Sheik is a very simple character in a way as well. But Marth, it's a cool idea. You're playing a guy who's just got this very long sword has some amazing combos, very fun to watch, very fun to play, and people just love Marth. It's a, it's a real thing in the Melee community, and it's it's not a bad thing, not at all. But another example of that is today I was watching um, the Five Gods thing, which is a thing going on on Twitch where it's a cool little event. They're hosting some gaming esports organization is hosting this, where they have um, some of the best Melee players in a setting where they're pretty much doing round robin pools and they're going to have a little tournament as well and so we're getting to see some really high level matches and of course I'm always wa I'm on Twitch all the time watching um, Super Smash Bros. Melee. If you ever see in the chat um, a picture of an ogre emote, that's pretty much me. The ZFG run ogre emote, I'm the guy who posts that quite a lot and I think many of you guys will have seen that. But anyway, so I was watching that and Mewtwo King is up and he was playing Nintendude and the last time he played Nintendo, Mewtwo King went Peach, and he ultimately ended up losing. So before he Mewtwo King even got up to the stage, the entire Twitch chat of like 30,000 people in the chat were saying, Mewtwo King, go Marth, go Marth, you're an idiot if you go Peach, or, you know, please go Marth, we want to see Marth. That's the, pretty much the entire chat is saying that, because they love watching his Marth, and I do too. And then Mewtwo King did end up going Peach for the first two games, and he was doing well. But yet the chat kept saying, go Marth, go Marth, go Marth. And just by coincidence, you know, it's not like Mewtwo, Mewtwo King's reading the chat, but he did actually go Marth on um, Nintendo's Battlefield Counterpick Game 3, and the chat just went ballistic. They love seeing it. And if you think about it, when, when Mewtwo King goes Sheik, people aren't as interested in Mewtwo King's Sheik compared to his Marth. It's very obvious that when Mewtwo King switches to Marth during a set, people get a lot more excited. They like watching the Marth a lot better. And for some of those reasons, that people like playing Marth better, that they like watching Marth better, I think that people tend to overrate him just very slightly. Um, again, not by a whole lot. But so, well, that's enough about Marth. Why is Sheik so good? Well, Sheik's matchups are very, very strong. She has... Some of her attributes are really the strongest in the game, if you think about it. For example, we'll, we'll start with her matchups. Her matchups are extremely good. Her down throw pretty much destroys almost every character in the game. On most of the characters in the game, from midweights to kind of floatier characters, she has guaranteed combos. She can either chain grab them, she can get a fuck ton of damage off them, or on the fast fallers, she can tech chase them. And I used to think that was a flaw, that she couldn't get these guaranteed combos on fast fallers. But really, the more I think about it, and over the years, I do think it's actually can be an advantage on those characters. You, if you're good at tech chasing with Sheik, you can get so much damage. It's pretty much just all to you. If you're good enough at tech chasing, you can convert it from one grab into a kill, which other characters, for example, versus Peach, let's say Peach is at like 80%, you'll down throw and you'll get one aerial, and you know maybe you'll have a slightly good position off of it. But that's really all you're going to get. Whereas with Fox, you can keep tech chasing him and tech chasing him. And then if you get him to a ledge, you can do a, th a forward throw or a back throw. Or you can read with a uh, 
I mean, uh, react and tech chase with a down smash to get him off stage, and you can convert it into a kill. And it's not very easy. Tech chasing is not an easy thing, even with Sheik, because tech and play shine is a real threat. Um, tournament nerves, tournament, you know, general people aren't. People are play a little more cautious in tournament, and you're playing on all sorts of different TVs that might play a little different. It's not a perfect thing, and no one has been able to tech chase. Um, at an extremely high level yet. I mean, there's been people close. For example, Drug Fox is extremely good at tech chasing. But I've seen plenty of matches with him even where he's getting shined out of his tech chases or he's struggling to... Um, if he doesn't jab reset, for example, and the opponent's just lying there on the ground, he'll struggle to um, cover that. Um, not to... I'm saying... Not to shots fired at him because I'm saying he's the best tech chaser in the world, but I'm using him as an example because even he, his tech chasing is not perfect. And he himself will admit that um, in tournament, he has trouble tech chasing compared to where, as if he played friendlies, he can tech chase very well. So, I mean, we'll see. The tech chasing meta is certainly developing. I'm develop developing my tech chase meta um, as much as I can. And it's a very, very powerful thing that Sheik has. And like I said, compared to like Peach or Puff, where you might just get a little hoo-ha, you can actually get so much damage on the tech chase. And she could chain grab many characters... Uh, Pikachu is a very common example. The chain grab is actually not as good on these characters as people like to think. People just seem to think that she can chain grab the whole bottom half of the tier list from 0 to 100, and there's nothing they can really do about it. On most characters, the chain grab really doesn't go very long, and it, sometimes it's even dependent on DI. For example, Pikachu can kind of DI slightly in at around like high 30s or 40% at the at the the, the highest, basically, and jump out or up air Sheik if um, Sheik goes for a grab when she shouldn't. And it actually depends on port as well, because if you're port 4, or the port closest to 4, your throws will actually give the opponent an extra frame of hit stun, which can actually matter for chain grabs um, somewhat significantly, um, which surprisingly, because normally you'd think you want to have the port closest to 1 because you'll have port priority, but there is actually an advantage with having a um, port that's closer to 4. I'm not sure if saying that your port is closer to 4 would be a lower port or a higher port. Um, the, see, the, oh, people seem to always have a different um, view on that as to whether the higher port means the higher number or the higher port is in the higher port closest to 1 because that's higher usually means better and port 1 is usually considered best. But uh, yeah, so that's one little tidbit. And you, so you can't, it's hard to narrow chain grabs down to an exact per percent because there's a lot of DI, there's DI involved, there's port involved. But the chain grabs don't go forever. And many characters she can't chain grab. For example, um, what's a really good example? Like Kirby, for example. Kirby can just DI in and he won't really get chain grabbed. There's many, like Ness can get chain grabbed a few times, but it really doesn't go very long. Um, the Marios can't really get chain grabbed. I think Dr. Mario, you can get one regrab on him, and that's pretty much it, and then you have to go to like up tilt or whatnot. Um, and the chain grab actually depends on DI. For example, Pikachu, like I said, can only get chain grabbed to like 40% if he keeps DIing in. And at that point, you can up tilt into usually another follow up after that. So you can get 60%, which is really, really strong. But people think it's like zero to death, which is really not, you know, Pikachu is not going to die at 60% from your up tilt follow up or whatnot. But um, it depends on DI, because if Pikachu DI is away in front of Sheik, then the chain grab actually keeps going. And it can go up to what, like 130 on Pikachu, which is pretty insane. But that's only if they keep DIing away. But optimally, um, at around let's say around 70%, maybe like 75. If she gets down throwed by Sheik, in theory, she should Pikachu should be totally screwed. Because if any if Pikachu DIs the down throw in at 70, she can turn around and tip her up smash in place and it'll kill Pikachu at like ridiculous percents. Because Sheik's up smash is um I believe it's slightly more powerful than Fox's if you get the tipper. Um someone can test that. I've heard it's more powerful from most people. Um, I asked Mewtwo King, he had no idea. And, you know, it's kind of, it's very similar, at least, is the uh, the real th the point that I'm trying to uh, bring across. Is That's a very powerful up smash. That's one little thing with Sheik that's, uh, that's worth mentioning, is her up smash is super powerful. So, like I said, the Pikachu can't DI in because um, he'll get up smash, and if the Pikachu keeps DIing away, Pikachu's going to keep getting chain grabbed until, like, 130, and then he'll get forward aired. So, um, there, there's little traps like that with, with Sheik's down throw where they have to keep getting chain grabbed, otherwise they're going to get tipper up smash and die, which is um, pretty scary. So, her matchups, because of things like down throw and a lot of other reasons, for example, needles are extremely, extremely good. 
the more I think about it, they might be better than Falco lasers as a projectile because they have so many more uses. Falco's lasers are good for edge guarding, but they're not as good. You can't snipe people below the stage, for example, with them unless you're really unless you're going to go down there and snipe them, which you're not really going to do. You can camp so many characters with sheet needles because they're very fast. They do a, they do so much damage. I mean, Smash Four players are unbearable, but they they complain all day about sheet needles, and they do like seven percent in that game. In melee, they do around 17 to 18 percent from a full charge of needles, and they're very fast. And a lot of characters can't really deal with that because a character like Link or something they can't really approach, and you can keep throwing needles and force them to approach very unsafely. And Sheik is Sheik's whole strength is that her her defensive game is so strong. If you try something bad for Sheik or try an unsafe approach or um, an unsafe option, Sheik's you know one of the best characters at punishing that. So like for example, if you know Ganon goes in and he misspaces an aerial because he's tired of all the needles that he's getting thrown at him, then she can grab him and start chain grabbing him or back throw him and gimp him. That's really Sheik's strength is not really offensive pressure, although there are a few things which I'll talk about where Sheik's offensively very good, but her defensive game is super, super good. And needles actually help with another thing, which is Sheik's one of her major flaws actually, and every character in the game has a ma have major flaws is that she actually struggles versus crouch canceling. So like for Falco, for example, a lot of her moves at zero at zero percent or low percent aren't gonna be very effective. Like if you forward tilt someone at zero, they're really not gonna go anywhere. Whereas if they're at like 60 or 70, then now we're talking, you might be able to pop them up for a forward air, um, maybe an up smash of their spaces or let's a little higher percent, but you get the idea. You can get super, super big combos off Sheik's tilts as long as the opponent has some percent on them. and. Needles are very, very helpful with that to get some percent on people. Because once you get that 17 to 18 percent, you're more than halfway there. You really only need like 30 percent for Sheik's tilts to start being very, very good moves for her um, dash attack to start comboing. That's And they can ASDI down that and, and um, not get popped up from that for a little longer, but you get the idea. And it's also very helpful for Spacey. Spacey's needles are super good, not only for edge guarding, but for getting that um, initial percent on Spacey's and being able to use your tilts on them. So her move set is, this is actually an idea I got from Fly Manita, um, probably around two years ago, is that Sheik's move set is probably the best in the game. That doesn't, I'm not saying she's the best character in the game, obviously you see it on the screen in front of you, I don't think she's the best character, but her moveset is extremely, extremely good. If you look at almost any of Sheik's moves, with a very few exceptions, they're all extremely useful, they're very, very good, very quick, very good hitboxes, very strong moves. All her aerials are extremely, extremely good, I mean, you couldn't, it'd be hard to make better aerials. For example, forward air is a very, very powerful killing move, very good pressure move. It sends at an angle, which is very unique. For an aerial, it doesn't, it's very hard to, um, recover after getting hit by a forwarder. I mean, you could actually DI forwarder straight up, and it's not as bad, but it's um, not quite as good as like a move like Fox's back air, where you can DI up and in, and then you're pretty much going to appear on the top corner of the screen and have a lot of recovery options, whereas Sheik's forward air sends you at an angle that's not very nice, and her back air does send you at a more normal angle, but it's very, very strong, and it's very, very good for edge guarding. Her nair is a frame three move. It's an excellent out of shield option. You can jump which is three frames, and Nair, which is another three frames, so you can do a Nair out of shield in six frames, which is one frame faster than grab to do an aerial, which is quite quite impressive. Um, Fox doesn't have any aerials that are that fast, although he does have shine out of shield, which is very good as well. But Nair out of shield is an extremely, extremely good out of shield option. It's very powerful, it's very fast, it can, it doesn't lead into a whole lot, but it can um, lead into good tech chase sort of situations, or not necessarily tech ch chase situations, but put them in a position where they have to roll away and you have a good um, kind of pressure situation on them. So that's one thing that Sheik has over Marth that is very, very beneficial, is a great out of shield option, whereas Marth doesn't have the greatest out of shield options. Nothing horrible, and but you know his best out of shield options do take a lot of commitment. And speaking of shields, Sheik's, Sheik's shield is probably the best in the game relative to her size. It's just huge and there's really no reason why it's so big other than it just is. It's a very big shield. It can take things like a peach down smash without really getting shield poked where um, Marth does not want to be shielding a peach down smash unless you got very good shield DI because you will get shield poked and sent off stage where Sheik doesn't have to worry about that. 
she can safely shield a move like that and just wave dash out of shield and grab um, into a big combo or or whatnot, or um, she can wave dash out of shield down smash, which is another great out of shield option that she has, um, particularly for punishing moves that are laggy and unsafe on shield. So in ter um, going through her moveset a little more, you have up air, which is a great vertical KO move. She c doesn't have to rely on killing off the sides of the screen or the bottom. She can kill very at re very reasonable percents with up air. Um, it's not super overpowered or anything, but it kills very nicely. Um, depending on the character, a little over 100 usually. Um, and it, it can even kill spaces, which is impressive. There's not many characters who have moves that can combo, you know, like you could do forward tilt into up air um, on spaces if they DI it inappropriately and it'll kill, which is very useful. And it makes she more versatile because she doesn't have to rely on just one, f one kind of direction of kill moves where um, other characters kind of do. So her, let's see, her other aerial is downer, which is um, sort of laggy and it has a kind of a high startup time but it's a very very good combo move and it actually builds damage extremely fast and it's a DI mix-up as well because you want to DI the downer away like left or right and you want to DI forward air up so if you're DIing for the forward air and she goes for another down air you're just gonna get popped up for the for, for more damage and potentially more down airs into a forward air um, a very good example of a player who uses this a lot is Mewtwo King Mewtwo King has great down air combos and um, you don't even need to use downer always because up air at low percents combos very well. And a lot of people, some people seem to have it in their head that Sheik's downer is, I mean, up air is better in PAL, where it's actually a lot weaker. In PAL, it's, it's a little bit more like Mars up air as a very, very rough comparison. But I really disagree because Sheik's NT, and there's a player, um, Stelzig, you also might know him as a uh, Mario Sunshine speedrunner that agreed with me on this, that... I do believe that Sheik's up air, oh, also Kirby Kaze agreed with me on this, so we got a nice consensus, that Sheik's up air is better. Sorry, I pulled my headset cord out accidentally. Um, anyway, I was saying, um, Kirby Kaze actually convinced me of this, that Sheik's up air is better in NTSC because for two reasons. For example, it combos better at low percents, which is very important because, as I was just saying, Sheik is a lot better when the opponent is at higher, at medium to higher percents. So when you could grab Peach and down throw her at like 30 and then get like double up air combos, which you couldn't do in PAL, that's a very, very, that's a very, very important percent to get it. It completely eliminates crouch cancel percent. And, um, for, well, obviously the big reason that it's a kill move where in PAL, it, it'll almost never kill. That's a major, major reason. Um, and I, that, uh, that should be honestly the, the major reason as to why it's better. And um, you can also combo into it in NTSC a lot better, and that's unrelated. I'm just talking about upper specifically. But the reason you could combo into it a lot better in NTSC is because her down throw um, in PAL is nerfed, and you can't really get down throw combos. There's a lot I could say about Sheik's down throw in PAL, um, but it's not super, super relevant to this video other than the fact that it makes Sheik not quite as good of a character in PAL. But um, so yeah, it kills earlier, it combos better at low percents, and a major reason is also just because it's a it gives Sheik a great move to use up versus opponent opponents at low percents. Um, as I was saying, at if Fox at like Fox or Falco at zero, if you are going to hit them with an aerial, such as like a Nair, it's not going to be so great. But up air is very powerful, so it, even at fairly low percents, it is a safe move to use. Um, maybe not at like zero. Maybe you could you know punish it at zero, but low percent in, gen in general, Sheik's up air is still quite good of a move, where in PAL it's not not so great. And even at higher percents, it has um, a little bit less hit stun in PAL, so it's not a great combo move in general. Um, you know, there are some, some very, very specific situations where I think it's better, but in general I would say it's not. So Sheik has a lot of other great moves. Um, her tilt is obviously extremely, extremely good. All, all three of them are great moves. Four tilt goes without saying that it's a super great combo move. It combos into itself. It combos into forward air. You can DI it. I do think the melee community in, in general is not great at DIing Sheik's forward tilt. Um, did I say forward air? I meant forward tilt. Forward tilt, you can DI it away and you, you get comboed less, but um, you can still combo off it depending on the percent. And it's it's hard to react to. It's frame 5, so you might get caught with it before you can react. And human reaction time is usually no faster than around 10 to 12 frames. So a frame 5 move, it's a little understandable why you could have trouble reacting to that, although there's some situations like, for example, um, if you're recovering and you think you're going to get hit by a forward tilt, you can preemptively DI. Uh, her down tilt is really great, it combos 
super well. It's great for, um, it's actually pretty decent for tech chasing um, to, to, to end a tech chase by down tilting and then you get a little combo. And it could even, the some of the really amazing things about Sheik's tilts is that they combo at ridiculous percents. You can do down tilt or forward tilt on Peach at like 100 and it'll combo into up air and it'll kill. Like the fact that you can do that before Peach or other characters have a chance to jump out is really incredible. A lot of characters have moves that are decent for comboing, but it'll get to a percent where they're just not going to combo anymore. Um, for example, Morris up tilt will stop comboing, although that move will start killing, so maybe that's not a great example, but there are many examples of that um, in Melee where moves stop comboing after a while, but Sheik's tilts go for quite a long time before they start stop uh, comboing. And her up tilt is super, super good. Up tilt is great for... Not only does it combo and it does a ton of damage, it's it's actually pretty decent on shield because... Unlike her other tilts, where it's just a hit and then a little bit of lag, instead of the lag, really, there's just a, a second hit. There's two parts to Sheik's up tilt, so it's very, very active, and like you can um, act out of it very quickly. And there's it's there's almost always a hitbox out. And like I said, it does combo. It protects Sheik from above. It protects Sheik in front because the second hit is a little kick that almost resembles Sheik's uh, forward tilt. So her tilts are extremely good, and then her special moves. The needles are obviously extremely, extremely good. Ch chain is not very good. Chain is not um, a great move from Sheik. It does actually have some uses. Edge guarding Captain Falcon and Ganon, we've seen um, Mewtwo King kind of embarrass some people with that. And in general, um, some characters have a harder time dealing with it than others. Although there are many other things you can do other than use the chain in situations like that, where you could just finish the kill. Um, so it's not a great move, but it's kind of interesting, um, some of the things you can do with it, and it's a little bit underdeveloped. Most people seem to think it's a little too silly to work on, but there might be some situations where you could find that are, it could be useful. So her down B, most people think that's absolutely junk, and you should never transform to Zelda. But on Dreamland, and even some other stages, you can transform to Zelda while recovering. So if you say you get hit by something like um, a Falco forward smash or Fox back air, and you get sent very high and away from the stage, you can transform into Zelda and drift better towards the stage um, farther, because even, Zel even though Zelda's aerial mobility is very poor, as well as Sheik says, um, Zelda falls very slowly, so you can um, fall back to the stage and then transform back, and then use Sheik's double jump, which is... Um, Sheik's double jump goes higher, although I think Zelda's will go farther just because she's floatier, so you can pick which double jump you kind of want to use. You could transfer back and have a better shot at recovering with Sheik, and her up B is not as bad as people think. For example, there's a few reasons why it's it's more defensible than in, than um, people really defend it for. Um, it it's an, it's invincible very quickly. So when she up B's, she will be invincible in 18 frames, which you might not sound great, but I mean think about it for Falco. He's sitting there for almost a second and he's not moving. Sheik's up B is moving and. You have to hit it during the beginning of it, which is not always easy, because if a Sheik just... You'll see this actually a lot at high-level play with Sheiks. They're just kind of up beat early, so they'll um, not give their opponent a chance to go out and hit those frames. And a lot of people actually don't even understand how Sheik's up beat works. Basically, it's, a, it's very, very briefly vulnerable for those 17 frames. Oh, it's not super, super brief, but it's not a long time either. And then um, it's completely invincible, and then when you land, of course, there is um, a bunch of landing lag, which is a big problem, I will say. And also, when she goes straight up with her uppie, she can't go. She has to go straight back down for a little while. Although, if a, a little bit of time passes um, when she's falling, when she lands, she actually won't have the landing lag. So sometimes a good option, um, kind of strangely, actually very good versus DK um, when you're getting juggled, juggled by his up airs, is to up B very high up, and then you could fast fall um, after a short amount of time, and you could land and you could shield right away because you'll only have the um, four frames of lag of a normal landing. So the landing lag doesn't always have to be there. You can also, um, Sheik's up B does have a hitbox right before she explodes, and the common strategy to kind of deal with this is to do a normal getup when edge guarding Sheik, although Sheik has a lot of options to kind of uh, maneuver around this, and Mewtwo King is a very, very good example. It's very hard to kill Mewtwo King because there's so many little tricks he'll do when he recovers with his up B. You can make it very, very ambiguous as to whether or not you're going to go for the ledge, you're going to go barely on stage, are you going to go for a platform? Um, are you going to go straight up? Are you going to up be right into the ledge? There's so many little mix-ups you can do with Sheik's Vanish, which um, can be tricky. There are ways to cover them, but um, you know you might get tricked, or um, maybe Sheik can get the ledge at the last second. And even if you roll up um, from the ledge as opposed to doing normal getup, 
um, you're not actually covering the ledge for that much longer, and you also give up a chance to punish Sheik if she recovers in certain ways. And the because Sheik is actually quite, um, she actually is not that light. She's 12th heaviest in the game, tied with um, Peach and one other character. And because of that, when she gets hit by a move, she doesn't actually go very far off stage compared to Spacey's. Like, you can back air Sheik on Dreamland at 100%, and she can actually, if she DIs a while, she can be close enough to the stage where she can just double jump and air dodge back onto the stage. And her air dodge is quite good. So air dodging onto the stage is a very common option with Sheik, and it's a fairly good one. And if the opponent is holding the ledge for too long, you can also throw needles at them which um, can kind of give you the free ledge depending on how high you were when you threw the needles. Sometimes they can get back onto the ledge first, and you don't see that too often, but you see it occasionally. And also, if you're on the ledge for too long and Sheik double jumps, and Sheik has a very good double jump, it goes very high, and it's relatively fast, you can fare them off the ledge. You can also wall jump. I'll do this quite a lot in my matches. I You can wall jump. Um, Sheik is one of the only eight characters who can wall jump. And you could wall jump back air, and this covers a ton of space. It's invincible. You do get a um, decent amount of invincibility from wall jumps, and this does actually matter a lot. There was a match um, I played, it's on YouTube somewhere, maybe in just a long tournament VOD, where um, it was me, my Sheik versus Saber Prime, who's a no well-known net player, his Fox on FOD, and there were two times where he went down to Shine Spike, my Sheik, and both times I was invincible because of a wall jump. And if I wasn't invincible because of the wall jump on that, in those situations, I would have died both times, and that's two stocks that would have been gone, whereas because of the wall jump and invincibility, I was able to survive, and the back air covers it very nicely. So there's a lot of, um, the wall jump and invincibility is very important, and um, especially on Yoshi's story, which is, I think, Sheik's one of her not-so-great stages. It's not terrible, and maybe we'll talk about that as well. On Yoshi's story, you can wall jump the entire way up, so, I mean, at least the wall extends all the way to the bottom, so you always have that option of wall jumping. And um, the Zelda mix-up is something I talked about. There's a lot of little tricks with Sheik's up B, and I think that's um, my little defense of why that move is not quite as horrible as um, some other up Bs out there. So her recovery's not horrible, but it's not great. It's one of her flaws that you... That yes, at the end of the day, there are ways you can just force Sheik to land on stage, and, for, and you can just back air, or you can... If you're Fox, you can get up and up smash. And it's definitely a flaw of the character, but like I said, every one of these characters has flaws. And Sheik is not a, is a very, very difficult character to gimp, and that makes up for her bad, rec her bad recovery at higher percents a lot. Because Fox and Falco, they can die at... Um, I saw um, earlier today, I think it was S-Fat versus Silent Wolf. Silent Wolf jumped up, and then he got shined at like 0%, and he died. Um, S-Fat just held the ledge. That won't happen to Sheik. Sheik will have your dou her double jump, she'll have... Um, her up B, she can, if you go for another shine spike, she can potentially up air you or forward air and reverse this, the ledge guard situation. Fox can get fucked up, or Falco, and they could die very, very low percents, and um, even Mars to some extent, because he goes so far, far from the shine. And Sheik um, does go decently far from shine, but you can also smash GI it and um, minimize that a lot. One of Sheik's best moves, arguably, and she has a lot of great moves, as I mentioned, is um, down smash. It does have lag at the end, but it's a very hard move to punish because it's a multi-hit move. And it's very difficult to know exactly when the shield stun, if you get hit by down smash on your shield, is going to end. And it depends on shield DI and stuff, but not only is it very hard to punish, and it's not impossible to punish, like Falcon can knee out a shield it, but um, it's not always that simple or easy in practice. But not only is it kind of hard to punish, it's also very fast, it comes out in frame 5. And um, it also has a little bit of invincibility in the front. So you can actually use it to, for example, if Fox is recovering from under battlefield and he goes straight up, you can actually time your down smash so that your down smash starts right when Fox is coming above the ledge. And the invincibility of the down smash will allow it to completely beat out the fire Fox, and then it'll set up for most likely a guaranteed uh, forward air or needle edge guard. And it's also great for t tech chasing and also for as an out of shield option. So one of the great things about it being a multi-hit move is it actually covers spot dodges extremely well. For example, one common situation you might find yourself in playing Sheik is fighting its Peach or Samus. A lot of their smash attacks are not safe on Sheik's shield. For example, if Samus down smash or Peach down smash, um, Sheik can theoretically wave dash out a shield, grab them, 
But those that's actually not always easy to do, especially versus Peach, because her down smash is also also multi hit. And um oftentimes you might be a little late if you go for wave dash out of shield grab, and they might be able to get a spot dodge out by um buffering it. However, if they spot dodge you can wave dash out of shield down smash instead and because down smash has so many hits your de your down smash will keep hitting until their spot dodge is over and they will get hit by your down smash and often it can multi hit as well and it covers both sides of Sheik as most down smashes do actually I think Mewtwo is the only down smash that doesn't cover both sides so maybe that's not too relevant but um it's an extremely good move great for edge guarding also great for tech chasing as well you'll see um some Sheiks and myself included if I think I'm going to be a little late to cover attack roll, I'll go and um, tech chase with down smash and try, instead of trying to get a regrab because if they buffer that spot dodge, um, the down smash, like I said, will outlast the spot dodge and hit them. And a lot of characters don't have of that luxury. For example, Marth, um, who I put Sheik above in this tier list, does not have Marth does not have many moves that stay out for very long. His moves come out relatively fast, but once they're out, they come back very quickly. Where Sheik has moves like Down Smash or Back Air or Nair that stay out for a very, very long time. And speaking of more of Sheik versus Marth in terms of their results, we really do see a lot of Sheiks at high level, and I would say a bit more than we see of um, Marth. Like we have Drug Fox to some extent, although he's been playing some other characters. Mewtwo King, obviously, we have a lot of uh, see his Sheik a lot at top level. We have um, Shroomed, we have Plup. And Marth is really only, I mean, to be fair, there's a few Marths, but very few solo Marth mains have shown any sort of, um, that they can really compete. Um, Pew Pew is definitely a great example, although I do think the Sheiks tend to outperform him at least a little bit. Um, the Moon we see occasionally, but you don't see him at, like, top 8 of every national, although he does have some, um, good placings. And, uh, PPMD, but he is a co-main as well. And to be fair, Mewtwo King is a co-main, and, you know, Drug Fox, which is characters, so... Sheik is a very good character to, to actually have um, a co-main character with. Like, for example, I play Sheik, but then for some matchups I'll go Ice Climbers. For example, like I said, the Ditto. Um, I would much prefer to go Ice Climbers. Um, and same with Marth. But we also, because I, just as an example, I do think Sheik does a little bit better versus Falco. And today, um, watching um, the Smash 5 Gods thing, and this is just one day, it really doesn't, I mean, this doesn't really count for much, because it's not really, it's just one, just a few examples, but today we had Pew Pew and PPMD beat Ice No Problem and Marth Fox, which I think Marth does better versus Fox than Sheik does, but we had PPMD and Pew Pew both lose to um, West Balls. In fact, actually West Balls managed to almost just dick around the first two games versus Pew Pew, and then he won the next three games, including two games on FD, and I do think Falco does better than Fox does, especially on, not a whole lot, but um, by a decent margin on FD because of lasers, and Falco is also a little bit harder to chain grab um, as well. The, his weight difference can um, kind of throw off the timings for many Mars, and um, the follow-ups are a little bit trickier. So that's just a little example of how sometimes you can see Mars struggle with Falco more than they would with uh, Fox. So some of the main sum to summary points as to why I think Sheik is better than Marth, just very, very slightly, is because Sheik has very reliable kill setups, um, either through tilts, which yes, can be DI'd, but um, not, that's not always a, uh, a possibility because of uh, reaction time and other, th other factors, and grab combos, which can be guaranteed kills, which can add a ton of damage. And um, she also has a way better shield than Marth. She can deal with shield pressure better, also because of her way better way better um out of shield options mostly near out of shield and um even fair out of shield is not horrible and um versus puff i actually think up smash out of shield is is an interesting option that i'm exploring more so the out of shield options are way better than marth the shield is better than marth and there's a lot of and the consistent kill setups is better than marth and i also th also think Sheik has really really great matchup charts so we'll go through it very briefly um versus fox i think fox has a very slight advantage over Sheik. It really actually gets better for Sheik at higher levels of play, where character, where Sheik players will have better edge guards and better tech chases. Whereas at lower or mid levels of play, I think Fox um, does can kind of bully Sheik, but it's up to the Sheik players to kind of optimize their punish game. And punish game is something where Sheik really excels. I also do think um, I'm surprised I didn't talk about this a whole lot, but I do think Sheik is the best character at edge guarding the game, and I have found that most people do agree with that. 
Um, Morris, of course, is extremely good, but I do think Sheik's needles and her aerials and her ledge game really does give her a slight edge over Marth in terms of uh, edge guarding, and her ability to just cover so many so many options at once. Versus Falco, it's sort of even, but the same principle applies that she has to optimize her punish game and um, edge guarding. Although same thing for Falco, really, um, Falco's kind of punishes and combos are a little bit more ambiguous and. At higher levels, Falcos are better than that. Sheik versus Marth is um, a pretty debated matchup. It used to be considered very good for Sheik, but in recent years, it's definitely gotten better for Marth. I think Marth actually has a little bit of an advantage in the neutral game, but we still see traditionally that Sheiks have been doing well in this matchup. I would probably say it's 55 to 45 for Sheik. Um, Kirby Kaze, for example, at um, Apex 2015, I believe he eliminated both the Moon and Pew Pew in Losers, and we saw not too long ago, we saw Plup actually beat BPMD, who is considered extremely, extremely good in that matchup, and Plup actually beat him. And again, I'm not going super based on results, but um, those are more or less confirming what I already have believed. But it's certainly way tougher for Sheik. Sheik has to be great at her punish game and edge guards versus Marth, or Marth's advantage of the neutral can actually um, be kind of tough. Versus Puff, I think the matchup is fairly even. A lot of people seem to think that that matchup is very good for Puff. I mean, people actually used to think it was really great for Sheik back in the day, and then Hungerbox started doing super well, and um, Mewtwo King is also terrified of Sheik Puff for some reason. Um, I've actually talked to him about, about this a little bit. He just thinks kind of, like, his re when, when I talked to him about this, he's, his reasoning was basically like, oh, well, Sheik just kills... Um, I can't really do a great Mewtwo King impersonation, but, oh, Sheik just kills Puff from a grab at 90 and all... Puff has to do is hit Sheik off and then rest, and that's, it's really dumb. Uh, I just want to go Fox. Fox is the only character who can, who can beat Puff. That's pretty much what Mewtwo King will tell you, although maybe his opinion has changed over the years, but it hasn't seemed to because he, you know, just from a tweet the other day, he said that, um, you know, I really wish Puff wasn't in the game because then I wouldn't have to play Fox, and, um, unfortunately, Fox is a character who's very strenuous on his hands, so, um, and his character is very strenuous on my hands as well, um, if I'm playing Fox fast as well, so... I don't know, I think Mewtwo King should put a little more faith on um, either Sheik and Marth in that matchup. And the reason I think is because you can do different things um, versus Puff. You can camp her really hard. You can make it actually kind of tough for Puff and neutral. Um, you can actually edge guard Puff, which is surprising. Most characters have no clue what to do when Puff is off the ledge. But Sheik can needle and actually burn Puff's jumps really quick and force her to take damage. Um, down throw, like, like we said kills at around 90, and while Puff can grab, I mean, Puff can duck under the grab, you can do certain things. If Puff has been crouching for a short amount of time, you can actually do a dash grab or a boost grab, and it can grab Puff because it goes lower than the jump cancel grab. And you could also um, down smash the crouch, which um, will often multi-hit. And another great thing that's from Kirby Kaze's guide on the um, Sheik Puff matchup is that say around 90%, if sh um, I'm not actually sure the percents because I've never really messed around with this, but Let's say around 90 to 100%, um, Puff is crouching, and she dash attacks the crouch. Because Puff is crouching, she won't go, go very high from the dash attack, and you can up air, and it'll actually kill. And we have seen good Sheiks do, even Sheiks that are far below Hungrybox's level of play are not so far anymore, but we, Hungrybox, I mean, has actually lost a set to Kirby Kaze in the past, and even the sets versus Kirby Kaze in recent years haven't looked too bad for Kirby Kaze, although um, Hungrybox has edged them out. Um, we saw um, a match in a crew battle recently where Plup took um, Hungrybox to the wire, and Plup in Locals has actually beaten Hungrybox a few times in the Sheik vs. Puff matchup. Um, we saw at Apex 2015, Shroom took Hungrybox to the wire um, in a Game 5 situation. So I think Hungrybox is a better player than every Sheik player on the planet, but um, even he can, you know, um, lose games to Sheik, which I think is telling. Because I do think Hungrybox is extremely fundamentally a very strong player, and um, the Sheiks do okay versus him, unless you know, which is worth noting. Um, versus Peach, I think Sheik does perfectly fine, probably around a 55-45 advantage, and um, maybe even more at higher level. But Peach is very tanky and has a good, great punish game on Sheik, so it's not that bad for Peach. And I do actually really like that matchup from both sides. But I think um, Sheik can. Combo Peach very well, can add percent, can avoid crash canceling, and actually edge guard Peach very effectively. Ice Climbers is very controversial. A lot of people think that Ice Climbers destroy Sheik, and um, some Sheiks are very 
maintain that, oh no, Sheik actually destroys ice climbers, you know, trust me. And I think that it's probably run even in high, in like very good levels of play, but in the level of play currently, um, or even just in general human level of play, and you could argue that um, this, because this tier list is based on at some, you know, theoretical level of human level of play, where people will still make some mistakes here and there, that Sheik, uh, you could argue that the matchup is not in Sheik's favor because um, basically what Sheik can do is use something called auto cancel forward air and this is actually something that's worth talking about a little bit is what she can do is she can short hop and at the peak height of her short hop she can forward air and fast wall at the same time and miraculously it actually auto cancels because um, it'll have no la landing lag it'll basically have the still four frames of landing as if you did a normal landing you don't have the L cancel it's, it's as if you didn't do an aerial um, at all which I explained this a little bit in the previous part, but that's very, very good versus Ice Climbers. You can essentially use that and other space aerials versus Ice Climbers to kill them um, and and just kind of do very well versus them. But the problem is, if they get one, if you miss space one of your aerials or you miss your timing a little bit, um, you get grabbed and you get wobbled, or you get down smash and then you get hit off stage and then you have to land and you get wobbled. So um, unless Sheik can play perfect, I do think Ice Climbers are a significant threat to Sheik players. And that's the reason when I usually play that matchup, I usually will ditto the Ice Climber player. Even though I th find Sheik versus Ice Climbers to be a very fun matchup, I do feel more comfortable in the Ice Climber ditto because it's nice knowing, it's tough knowing that um, if I'm playing Sheik, if I make one mistake, um, I could get wobbled. And now we're talking about a three stock to four stock game um, versus a character who you can't really gimp very well. So that's um, definitely a significant threat to Sheik, but I would say it's probably even at um, high levels and definitely favoring Ice Climbers at more medium to lower levels for sure. Falcon, I think 55-45 for Sheik roughly. Um, maybe more at um, very, very high levels of play or more at very low levels of play. But Falcon certainly has some things in that matchup. He has a good combo game, but um, I think Sheik's punishes are stronger. Her edge, her edge guards are slightly stronger because she can get Falcon off stage at very low percent. She can combo Falcon very well. Um, Falcon actually has to almost always DI down throw away because if Falcon DI's down throw in at like 45%, he can start getting chain grabbed or forward tilted or um, like nared at higher percents or down smash. Um, and that makes, and also Falcon's tech rolls are very poor, so it's he's easier to tech chase. Um, and if you don't jab reset him, you can just react to um, his rolls from no tech, although that's a little tougher. And um, I haven't seen anyone do that great, but in general, um, the punish game for Sheik and the edge guard game, everything is just a little bit better um, in, in Sheik's favor in that matchup, but it's not too bad for Falcon. Maybe it's a little bit better that for Sheik than 55-45, maybe I'm trying to be too fair to Falcons, but maybe at the same time, maybe it isn't. Um, Pikachu, I pl actually played the what I consider the second best Pikachu um, in this matchup quite a lot, so um, not many people can say it, but I actually do have a lot of experience, or at least a decent amount of experience in the Sheik Pikachu matchup, and it is not nearly as bad for Pikachu as people like to think. As I already covered, the chain grab doesn't go forever. Um, there are different things Pikachu can do to get out of it at percents where um, if you if you try to keep chain grabbing, Pikachu can jump out. Um, Pikachu's punish game on Sheik is very, very strong if Pikachu hits Sheik off at um, like 90% and Sheik has to up be on stage. Pikachu can do Thunder, or if it's even lower percent than that, Pikachu can, I mean, uh, Pikachu can do Up Smash, but if it's lower percent than that, like 80 or 70, um, Pikachu can do Up Smash to Thunder and kill Sheik at very, very um, reasonable percents below 100, which is, um, and Sheik is not a fast faller, but she's close to being one. Um, I call her kind of like a pseudo fast faller because her falling speed is, um, it's definitely way above average, but it, there is a significant gap between her and the actual fast faller, so she's not a fast faller, but um, that also makes her easier to combo, which is a, a problem, but she can survive very reasonable to very reasonable percents from like Fox Up Smash or um, Up Air, for example. But um, Pikachu's punish game in that matchup is very strong, her edge guard, I mean, I consider Pikachu a, a he, but um, he his edge guarding game is very strong on Sheik, and um, Sheik actually doesn't kill Pikachu very early, unless you can get some crazy needle gimp on Pikachu and they go for the ledge when they shouldn't. Um, if Pikachu DIs forward air and upper appropriately and um, DIs the down throw appropriately, Pikachu can live to 140% in that matchup because his ability to recover a uh, vast majority of the time. Um, really the problem for Pikachu in that matchup is crouch canceling and the uh, grab punishes are very, very strong, of course, from Sheik, but it's not that bad. And the rest of the cast is part of the reason as well Sheik um, is so strong. 
Um, like I said, the down throw combos on these characters, the needle camping, the edge guards, it's really m way too much for most of these characters to bear. Um, funny enough, actually, Pichu and um, I would say Young Link don't do horrible over Sheik. But that that's kind of, might sound like a weird statement, but um, Pichu can actually do a lot of the same things Pikachu can do, like up throw, up smash. Um, Young Link can juggle Sheik to no end. But um, a Yoshi is actually okay for Sheik, and it's not too horrible for Yoshi. Um, but a lot of these characters, Sheik does at least have a slight advantage verse. Um, definitely versus Luigi. Um, pretty much all these characters, I would say Sheik uh, has a slight advantage versus probably a little bit more than a slight advantage versus um, these two characters. Um, arguably a little bit more, maybe like 60-40 for all three of these characters at a good level of play. Maybe slightly less than that good for the rest of these, for Yoshi. And then the rest of these characters, I can't see any of these being um, any, wor any worse for Sheik than 60-40. So Sheik has a fantastic matchup chart. She does well at high level. She has no horrible matchups as all these four characters um, don't. Um, none of these four characters have a bad matchups. That's why they're in or horrible matchups. That's why they're in this tier. Whereas these characters, once we start talking about them, they actually do have some pretty bad matchups. And yeah, her move set's fantastic. Her punishes are fantastic. Uh, her chain grabs are are just grab combos in general. Her edge guards. There are so many great things to say about Sheik that I could probably talk another two hours about it. But um, this is already the longest video in the series so far. So I think that's um about enough for uh, Sheik. So. Um, I didn't talk too much about Marth or why he's worse in this video, or actually I actually did say a few things, but we'll certainly have plenty to say about Marth in the next part. And um, if you haven't seen all the parts in this series, I organized them into a playlist, which is in the description, so you can check that out. I don't see why you'd be watching this video first if you haven't, but um, maybe you stumbled upon it and someday in the future. But yeah, anyway, so um, again, please let me know if you have any thoughts on this tier list, any character on the list if you think... Um, they should be changed, let me know, and potentially let me know why. And um, yeah, I will see you guys in the next part where we talk about Marth. Um, I'm sure I'll have quite a lot to say about him, not quite as much as Sheik, but Sheik is a character that I main and is my best character, so um, naturally there are a lot of things to say about her. But um, yeah, like this video if you enjoyed, please. Um, you know, there's a little bit of preparation that goes into these videos, so um, a like would definitely show me that you appreciate it, and um, whether you agree or disagree with my opinions. Um, subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. Plenty more of these videos coming in the future. Comment. Feel free to let me know your thoughts. Um, I'm sure watching this video all the way through, you've definitely had some thoughts. So let me know them. And um, yeah, follow me on Twitter and Twitch that you down below. Um, I definitely, in the last year, have been a little bit more active on Twitter. So um, more interaction there is always great. And um, yeah, that's about it. That's all the things I have to cover. And again, let me know also if you are an artist or and you think you'd be good at making um, thumbnails or even like channel art for my channel. That would be um, an interesting uh, thing we could do. So again, um, not looking to pay people or anything, but if you are good at art and you want um, a, a try at it, and um, yeah, I will give you credit, of course. But yeah, anyway, so I will see you guys in the next video, part four. We'll, we'll t we will talk about Marth, and um, yeah, happy playing Melee.